Welcome back to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. On today's show, we have Forrest Flagger and Zach Mix of Parspec. Um, Forrest developed a passion for housing affordability and sustainability at a young age as the son of a home builder in Santa Cruz, California. He pursued a career in building engineering and partners uh, with OV Arup and Partners in London, UK, where he became fascinated by how computing could be used to augment architects and engineers' abilities for design, exploration, and optimization. After pursuing a PhD and spending some time on the research and teaching team at Stanford, Forrest joined the technology-driven off-site construction company Katera, where he led the company's software design and automation efforts. Forrest founded Parspec, in uh, 2020 with the mission of simplifying the process of discovering sor- and sourcing the best available construction products and materials. He is the CEO and founder, Parspec.io. Zach Mix leads the sales and business development team at Parspec. After spending the past decade working for lighting and electrical companies, including Green Creative, Wattstopper, ElectroRep, Zach is energized by providing top-tier software technology to help lighting and electrical companies perform their best, Greg Eric. Zach is passionate about developing more sustainable infrastructure, whether it be increasing energy efficiency within buildings, using higher quality materials, or optimizing systems for longevity. He is focused on creating long-term value for future generations. But you know what? Before we talk to these two guys that are, you know, educated and all that, we got to talk about those gangsters down in New York, Greg Eric. Satco.com, S-A-T-C-O.com. Hey, they allow you as a distributor to compete with Amazon. I'm going to share you a quick little story here. I had a customer send me a link to an Amazon product. It was a little four-inch square recess can. They needed 100 of them. I sent it to Satco. They came back with four options that were all comparable, all in stock, all priced so that I could make a healthy margin, and way better quality. They have over 1.5 million square feet of inventory throughout the North America, thousands of product. Who the hell needs Amazon? You just got to stay with the gangsters down at Satco. Stick with those gangsters down there. They're spreading the love the Brooklyn way. And, of course, National Association, Greg Eric, of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Go to NAILD.org. You got a warehouse with lights in it? That's right. This is your association. You need to join up, get into the conversation, and help us drive innovation in the lighting industry. Go to NAILD.org. Welcome to the show, Zach and... Um, oh, hang on one second. You're in Forest. I got too many papers in front of me. Welcome to the show. Parspec. What do we got? Thanks, Who's for, going having Thanks for having oh, us, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you guys were on, you know, we looked at it last uh, a year and a half ago or so. Uh, full disclosure, I was wearing the same shirt, but we're not going to get into that here. <laughs> um, and just wanted to see because it sounded like you guys launched your software. This was pre-launch of your software. And now you're at it. Give us a quick rundown again. We won't go as deep as into Parspec as we did last time, but just give us a quick rundown on what you guys do and what happened with the software. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we, um, the software we were working on when we spoke last time was uh, supporting the submittal and O&M documentation process. Uh, So basically tries to automate that process by automatically associating data sheets and helping to automate the markup just to make it a lot easier and faster to prepare submittal packages. Uh, we launched that in uh, May of last year. Um, we currently have just over 150 accounts as customers, so really getting good feedback and traction for the Submittal and O&M product. And we're actually excited to kind of talk about some new offerings that we're bringing to market in January of next year, which focus uh, on the quoting and product selection process. So. So we're working towards the development, working closely with a few strategic customers to build those out. And that's uh, what we're planning for early next year. So since the launch of it in May of 22, did you have to make any changes? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I would think. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll I'll let Zach talk a little bit more about it. Um, We've definitely work really closely with customers to incorporate their feedback. You know, we're a new company in market. So we've been very um, sort of interested in like getting feedback from the market. We've made a lot of improvements over the past, you know, year and change. Um, Zach, I, I'm sure you, maybe you want to talk about a couple yeah. details there, but yeah. Absolutely. I, I just want to point out that we, we try to listen to our customers, our prospects as best as we can. The feedback that we get from that community of users and accounts has really helped us 
it, it has helped the, the platform evolve to where it is today. When you talk about changes, there has been many, many changes over the past year and a half. Uh, we have releases, even releases in between that, where we're pushing out minor features. But typically every quarter we have major releases. Uh, most recently, we added support for O&M documentation as an example, where we automatically find install guides and warranties from the top lighting manufacturers so that not only do our customers and users not have to search for data sheets from thousands of manufacturers, but now they can also grab install guides, warranties when they're trying to close out that project, which usually takes a long time. Um, and you know, as far as changes go, right, there, there have been a lot, but fundamentally the whole workflow has remained pretty much uh, the same. It's just, we've made improvements to help our customers become more efficient. We've helped them be more consistent, more collaborative along the way by adding, like I said, a lot of uh, smaller features and then larger features along the way. But it's really a result of the communication from those customers, from those users directly to us via various channels. Hmm. You know, one of the one of the things, first of all, like um, before I ask my next question, I want to know, like, what is what, what do you guys do? You say you use AI. You go on ChatGPT and ask it. <laughs> Can you make Parspec better? I mean, how do you you how do you incorporate AI? What does that mean? Is it machine learning? Is it actually what the heck are you doing with AI in your system? Like, what does it do? I'm curious about that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple uh, parts which AI factors into the workflow. Um, so the first part is like you need to get a bill of materials like into Parspec to you know, prepare a quote or prepare a submittal. Um, so that may be a variety of formats, right? It may be a PDF drawing, a schedule, right? It might be an Excel document. It might be pasted out of an email. Um, so uh, we use uh, technology to convert those images in some cases to, to text, right? So that you can read that. And then we have to associate and know what is a manufacturer? What is a model number? What is a quantity, right? Like all the key attributes that go into a bill of materials. So we leverage information in that document to make a determination as to what are the different uh, key attributes of each product, right? So that we can automatically bring in, you know, document, you know, build materials in a variety of formats and be able to read it in Parspec. So that's that's one element. Um, the more fundamental element is um, the sort of the document identification and markup, right? So if you have a bill of materials and you want to associate data sheets to those bill of materials. You know, the process today would be typically like go to a manufacturer's website, you download that documentation, you compile it into a, you know, submittal package. Um, what we do to try to make that easier is on a daily basis, we crawl uh, over 1800 lighting manufacturers and we index all of the product documentation that is hosted there. So that's data sheets, install guides, warranties, as Zach mentioned. Um, and then we leverage AI to understand what product uh, manufacturer model number is associated with that data sheet. So we're reading information out of the data sheet to be able to automatically associate it to a bomb line item. And then we're also extracting the key technical attributes out of that data sheet. So things like lumens, uh, all of the key key information, we're pulling that out and structuring it so you can do requirements based search or comparison, right? So if you have a certain set of requirements, you're looking for a product to supply those requirements, right? Then we um, were able to do that type of uh, match, right? Of matching products to requirements. You know, it's, um, I've often said on this show and other shows, Greg, that the enemy of freedom and society is the not-for-profit corporation. You know, I've said that a couple of times. And what I'm referring to is there seems, and this is where a Parspec, I think, can solve problems in the lighting industry. There's descending on the lighting industry right now, for some reason, the lighting industry is like the tip of the spear for this, is a whole bunch of product labeling um, and certification, circular economy, DLC for energy efficiency, UL. And so I was recently putting in a rebate application and I'm talking maybe 160 emails on this one rebate application. And it goes back to, it was a custom program 
and the UL certification wasn't updated, the DLC certification wasn't updated, and there needed to be all this paperwork that went along with this one item so that it could be approved into um, this rebate application. So we spent so much time, what's the total harmonic distortion of the device? Pull out this spec, where's that spec? Where's this item, where's that item? And I swear to God, this took forever. It was so, I didn't have any, I don't have any hair left, but I would have pulled out the rest <laughs> of it on this one. You know, is that what you guys are trying to do is rid the um, construction and, and material and, and environment make it easier for people to send people that documentation because if it is i think this is very i think you guys are set to grow i'll be honest with you is that what you're meaning to yeah, do? I, get combine all that stuff into one place so i think one of the the foundational pillars of parspec is providing better access to data right so we can take a just a string of characters a model number and we can help a user find a data sheet. We can also help them find an install guide, find a warranty. That's as far as we've taken it today, but you can imagine a world where we take that even further. We're pulling IES files to help the designer add it to their, you know, their mockups, their drawings, or to your point, finding certification documents that help you submit on that rebate claim so you can get that money back on the back end. Um, so you're, you're absolutely correct. It's just a matter of you know, what scope is the right scope for our user base that they will actually take advantage of. And I think there is potential to go as, as deep as that, you know, finding DLC documentation, Energy Star documentation, the Claire documentation. Um, <clears throat> so that, that is in line with what we're doing. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole new stakeholder group that's set up for circular economy that I'm joining that is going to be discussing the lighting industry. And I'm looking at this thing going, what is this now, Greg? You know what I mean? Like, what, what are we, what new, like, like are light fixtures going to be entirely covered with all these labels all over them? You know, and where is everyone going to find this paperwork and when does it become a tyranny, you know? And so I think there is a, a lot of room for, for companies like this, Greg, that, that are going to um, make that easier for people in lighting because right now you're talking about four or five different product label certifications you need to send in to get a rebate um, here in Ontario. Um, and that's a pain in the ass. I'll tell you right now, part of my language on the show here. Sorry, Scott, I know. But, you know, I, and, and so I, I think there's growth in this market. When you say, again, when you say AI, is the AI actually reading the specification sheets and able to know the difference between THD and know that that means total harmonic distortion, for example? Is that the type of, it's reading it like a human would? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's looking at, it's reading the content out of, say, a PDF hosted on a manufacturer website and making a determination that this is a data sheet, this is a warranty, this is an install guide. Right. And then in the case of a data sheet, it's reading information out of that data sheet, which is all the like the technical attributes that are hosted there in the ordering guide. Right. To know like these are the attributes of this product. Um, and by structuring it in that way, we can make it easier for people to search for products. Right. If they have certain requirements, technical requirements, we can automatically match that with products that match those requirements, which could include a certification. Right. If that's listed on the warranty information if you're looking for a product with a certain certification the um when it's going through these documents and and compiling that information and then sorting it into different database fields um how do you doesn't someone have to set that up originally or does the uh, artificial intelligence know how to set that up on its own you mean like what are the attributes that people yeah. care about essentially? yeah yeah yeah, I mean, that's where I think, uh, you know, s some of us have been following like what's happening with large language models and things like chat GPT, right? That's making it really easy to essentially ask queries to the internet for, for information. And so the cool thing about those models is they don't require you upfront to say to categorize each attribute and put it into a box, right? You can just ask a query and it will return intelligent responses. So we're actually leveraging. Sometimes, sometimes the responses from ChatGPT are stupid. I'll be honest yes. with you. I use it every day because like, this guy's an idiot. You know what I'm saying? I tell it yeah, that so sometimes we, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to make that very domain specific to like these type of queries, right? So that it'll perform much better than like a generalist model like ChatGPT will 
for the type of queries that someone has when they're searching for products, for example. So are you configuring your own chat GPT? Like does Parspec have Parspec GPT that you guys are configuring and telling it to do things? Or what is exactly happening while you're page scraping? Is that your own software? Yes, it's our own software. Hmm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have... Yeah, so... I mean... Oh, go ahead, Flores. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean just from our research, right? I mean, why we decided to get into this space around product selection and quoting, right? We talked about the Smittal and O&M process. That's where we started. You know, it was kind of our customers who kind of asked us to get involved earlier in the process, right? Like, the, so the quoting process by our research, like 30 to 40% of the time spent in preparing a quote is sort of in product selection, oh, right? Sure. It's like, um, you're trying to figure out what's the right product to meet the spec. And so that process today is very manual, right? You're like comparing a spec to a PDF data sheet, like trying to understand what's the right product, whether it meets all the requirements. We're effectively just making that easier, right? And the way that we make that easier is if you have a basis of design product, we can surface other products that have very similar technical performance characteristics. Or if you have a set of requirements, we can identify products that meet those requirements. So we're not making the selection for the quoter. We're just giving them a short list of products that we believe are compliant with the spec and making their job easier to pick the one that they'd want to use. So they can, you know, shortlist manufacturers or kind of refine the search any way that they want. And hopefully it's much easier for them to, to make good product selections, right? For their searches. That's the, you know, that's, that's our kind of end goal um, with, regard to product selection, right? And then downstream, finding all the documentation, that's what Zach mentioned, right? Those are the two areas we're trying to help with product selection and then like finding documentation associated with those products. You, you might've just answered it to some degree, but I like to bring it into what I do, you know? So I'm gonna give you another example here is somebody sent me some electrical drawings and said, can you value engineer this? And, you know, I don't do electrical drawings or anything, so I have to look at it and I see, you know, what this part number is, and then I have to Google the part number, and then I have to label it A1, and then put that saved as a cut sheet. Then I do that with A2, A3, you know, and, and then from there, then I can look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's like this. I can change it there. That one's like this, but that's a process. Now, are you saying yeah. I could send, you know, if I was a Parspec customer, I could input that info, and how would I input that info if it's just a PDF? How, do you, how does the process work? I'll go ahead and take that one. So, uh, Greg, you would basically upload that design file with that fixture schedule, the electrical drawings. As long as there mm -hmm. is a list of manufacturers in model numbers, that's enough for the Parspec system to help you out. So you can upload that PDF using optical character recognition. Our system will mm -hmm. automatically transcribe all that product information from that fixture schedule table, add it to the Parspec app. From there, we can help you find documents for those basis of design products that were specified. And if some of those products are aligned with your business, great, you can quote those. If you're trying to find alternates for the reason that you cited to value engineer the project, meaning maybe you know the client needs something that's lower cost, you could do that. Maybe something isn't available. Maybe you know something just doesn't meet the design requirements. So you need to find those alternates. So once, once we help you find that basis of design data sheet, uh, alluding to what Forrest said, we can extract the attributes from that data sheet. And then you could key in, you know, if you have particular goals to hit as a distributor, or if you have preferred vendors as a rep kind of business to, you could key those specific manufacturers in. And then we're going to try to help you find data sheets that match that criteria, the attributes that you're looking at, and you could curate it, right? You have controls to edit those attributes if you're looking for something similar yet different. Um, you could also use keywords like, you know, uh, Michael, your example, you could list DLC or declare, and it'll try to locate those characters from the data sheets to further refine the search. And then once you, you know, find the product that you're looking for, you can select that data sheet, configure the model number and propose it as an alternate. Is there, many... P is there me, uh, the PDFs, like, you know how some PDFs you can cut and you can, you can scroll over top of the um the the wording in the pdf and paste it and other pdfs are like flat 
you can't yeah. it's more like a picture does it does your software does it handle anything that you throw up there is it like literally digitally looking at it or does it need to be able to be a certain kind of pdf yeah so that's um that's what zach mentioned with the optical character recognition right so if it's what what's called like a text editable pdf right which means you can actually like highlight the text and cut and paste it obviously we can read that if it's not we basically treat it as an image and then convert those that image to text using OCR. So yeah, we can handle basically like non-text selectable PDFs and bring them into the system. Hmm. And I think you mentioned you have 150 customers or accounts. Is that the number of manufacturers you have in your database as well, or how many is that? Um, no, for customers, it's uh, primarily rep agents and distributors who are making submittal packages or doing product selection. On the manufacturer side, um, we have over 1,800 uh, different manufacturers in the system today. So that's, I think, from from just data sheet documents, it's over a million and a half different data sheets. Um, and then when you yeah. start throwing in uh, warranties and install guides, you know, you're you're pushing above two million. So quite a lot of documents, right, um, that are being indexed in the system. Yeah. And just, just to make a point, you know, with that number of manufacturers and documents, uh, it, it's hard for any one of us <clears throat> in the industry, whether we work for a distributor, a rep agent, a contractor, to keep up with all the changes and new products that those manufacturers produce and publish. Um, and rather than relying on those 1800 manufacturers to, to push data towards us and chase them down, you know, using our web crawlers and looking at the data sheets, we can extract that information automatically. So we add a tremendous amount of value to these organizations because we can help bridge that that you know gap in work required to maintain that information. And I, I'm glad you uh, you mentioned that point, Zach, because I, I do want to highlight one point. There's also the risk, right, that like uh, what you've quoted or what you've submitted on is no longer uh, suppliable by that by a manufacturer. Um, and so one uh, feature that we have to sort of alert you to that is if the uh, data sheet, for example, is no longer hosted on the manufacturer website, but it's something you've submitted on or something that's in progress, we'll notify you to say, hey, just wanted to let you know that this, this document is no longer active on the site. You might want to confirm, right, that it can be supplied to avoid, you know, making those type of mistakes around just not being aware that a product has been discontinued. Um, that, and as far that, as the, the the types of product, that that's one thing I want to um, ask about. And one of the most difficult things for a lighting distributor like me, probably Mike as well, um, is decorative lights. So like, you know, if it's a apartment complex that's getting built and they want to put a bathroom vanity light and a uh, pendant light, you guys have alternatives for that. And, and how do you, how, how could, how could you even possibly do that without, you know, looking at the picture, then looking at a catalog you think AI can do all that? You know AI. Can I'll take this quickly, and then I can like can let Zach um, follow through. But we actually one of the exciting things that we're working on now is um, essentially image similarity, right? So uh, we'll have an image of the decorative fixture. We'll be able to max match that to other similar looking parts. Um, so again, we're not developing like the fundamental image similarity matching there's like existing work that has been done that does that actually very well um what we're doing is we're actually sourcing those images for each product right to make sure that we have accurate images and therefore and then leveraging existing technology to be able to find similarities there so that's not something that's available today but something in the first quarter of next year that we'll be uh launching which will enable you to um to do that for decorative fixtures where the aesthetics is a key part of the selection criteria. These guys are dangerous, Greg, um, because you, they, one of the issues in lighting that's, you know, you got, I heard it discussed was in the past you used to deal with manufacturers that would have specs and they could make any product that you ordered from them. Most people are importing their stuff from China. When it's gone, it's gone. Time for the new version to come out. And these cycles of inventory are very fast. They want to move that stuff in and out as quickly as possible, right? I mean, how many, Greg, how many product cycles do we have 
it's probably one a year, no? Every year, eight months, a new cycle of LED products comes out. I mean, now you have fixtures that are wattage selectable, 120 to 347 volt, color selectable. And like this is in the last year that all these changes have come out, Greg, no? Uh -huh. Yeah, no. It's, right? I would so say that's yeah. fair. And the cycle of the products coming in and out it, like coming in like you it takes longer to build a spec and get a construction project started then you're going to have two or three cycles of led lights going through the system by the time they they go ahead and are ready to buy them we did a little bit of research on the amount of SKUs and how that's changed over time and like by our estimate um in the past 20 years we have 30x the amount of SKUs um that have come online right so that speaks a little bit to like there's just many more products per year, right? That uh, that you need to keep track of in the industry, and LED is a big part of that. But um, that's why I think it's it's really challenging, as Zach mentioned, right? To like just stay current, right, on everything that's available in the market with the amount of the variety that's available today, and, and uh, we're trying to address that pain point essentially of like how how can you keep up to date on uh, what's current in the market. And it's also worth pointing out a minor feature that we added to our, our search engine within Parspec that helps users find data sheets, install guides, warranties, is we added what's called a live tag. So when they're searching for a data sheet and they're looking at the results that surface in Parspec, uh, it indicates whether that data sheet is actively on the, the manufacturer's website or not. So if it has a live tag, you can be confident that it's something that's available. You know, it's on their website is active. If it doesn't, then you run the risk of potentially specifying or trying to sell something that could be outdated. The um, the reason why I think you're dangerous is that the 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 person that's able to really put this together is going to be um, uh, extremely powerful in the long run. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask Greg a question. Sometimes I ask my co-host a question rather than the guest, yeah. because <laughs> I want to look at it from our perspective. Like one of the things that's very difficult to do in the, in the led world, Greg, that which would be a huge help is to somehow create, uh, compare like products. You know what I'm saying? From different manufacturers, <laughs> compile like products that are very similar. Um, in the old days, you know, a four foot fluorescent tube, 40 K was a four foot fluorescent tube that was 40 K and you could pretty much sell anyone that. And, you know, everyone kind of had the same one. And now it changes so quickly that it becomes difficult to do these kinds of comparisons. And the person that can do it becomes very powerful in the industry. I mean, I, there, you know, you're going to have to start selling an API to your system rather than a, than a user license. You know what I'm saying? Like you can API right in, buddy, and then you can take all the information and put it in your system rather than using it like a human. I'd rather use my own AI, Forrest. You know what I'm saying? Um, to look at what you have. I see the, the power, if you guys can be successful with this, um, is in uh, helping the industry create sort of um, comparisons of like products. That, that would be extremely powerful. Um, and very and we, we for new players, for people that are new to lighting, Zach, that's very mm -hmm. difficult to learn. And it moves so quickly, it's hard to keep track of. Yeah, th there's two things that you just said that I think are really interesting. First, the one that you just mentioned, new people to lighting or, or just new employees in general. Uh, one thing that, that we've heard, you know, firsthand from actually a really large customer of ours, Sesco Lighting, for example, is that th they use our service. One of the things that they love about it is it can help narrow the, the performance gap between maybe an entry level person and somebody that's been doing it for a long time. That's not to say that those people are on the same level because of Parspec, but we're just narrowing that gap. We're enabling this new person to have better access to data, to be more consistent, to be collaborative with their colleagues and then leverage the work that their colleagues have done. Right. Um, so th that's that's one comment. And then your comment on comparing products, you know, that's something that's super important to us. If if you as a distributor, I'm sure you offer maybe quote A and quote B or quote A, B and C, you're trying to sell variations of the project for different reasons. Maybe you're, you know, one quote is optimized for price, one quote is optimized for performance, for example, and you want your customer to have all the information at their disposal to make an informed decision. We, we believe in that as well. And we want to make it easy for the user, you know, of Parspec to compare data sheets to make sure that they, you know, the model numbers match up and are aligned and they can propose it as an alternate and then give them the ability to quickly create variations of a quote. 
so that they can get that approved, have those quotes quotes enriched with data sheets that support the products that they're trying to sell, um, which leads to you know a higher success rate or chance of success for the distributor and a happier customer. Why can't you just go to the AI forest and say, make Parspec for me? Like, doesn't it, is it- Oh, you mean it, have it build, build the tools? Yeah, like why why do it why does it need prompts? Like can't you just uh, I saw this one video of a guy they did a whiteboard and they took a picture of the whiteboard and then they told the AI what the whiteboard was and it coded the stuff like in 2 minutes after the meeting. It was super scary. Um why can't you yeah, just I mean, tell I, the AI yeah. make parspec for me now? I mean, I think that there's right. a lot of um sort of speculation right about what the potential of AI is, but I think you when we first talked about it, you kind of mentioned that you make queries to chat GPT and you don't get very good answers, right? And I think ultimately what we should realize is like AI models are trained on data. And like if the data that they're trained on isn't very good or they don't have a lot of experience answering the particular questions, they're not gonna be very good at answering them, right? So if you're generating an email and you're doing like generative text, like AI is great because there's you know, there's a huge data set of information that it can train on. When we're starting to think about like finding products, um, now we're talking about a very specific set of data and a very like unique search criteria. And like that requires unique tools that have to be developed in collaboration with users over time. And so we're essentially trying to be very good at solving these specific problems that like the more generalist AI stuff won't solve, right? Just because they're not focused on this problem. And so I guess that's the short answer, right? Is like, um, there's no AI technology that just like works out of the box to, to solve like every problem where it has to be trained um, and it has to require a lot of like user input uh, to make sure we're getting valid answers. And so we're trying to do the legwork now to like really work closely with our customers to make sure we're providing good answers to the questions. Uh, but it is pretty exciting technology, right? Just in terms of what the, the possibilities are to be able to ask, hey, I'm looking for a product that has this criteria just in natural language. And like the models uh, that we're starting to see are like, it's performing really well, right? If you're looking for products that have a certain certification or a certain technical spec, uh, we're seeing very good answers to be able to surface that up over you know millions of data sheets, bring you the handful of ones that best match that criteria. I used to use an editor, uh, like a, a human being. Okay, so we would write, mm -hmm. Greg and I were in the, you know, we write lots of, as a management company, we, for Nailed, we'll like write open letters to the industry or we'll write a report, a white paper for our members to review and read and just be up to date on certain things that the organization is doing. And in the past, I would work, you know, I would be in charge of writing a lot of this stuff along with one of our journalists here. And then I would send it to a, human editor who would then go through it and make suggestions and all this sort of stuff. That guy doesn't have a job with me anymore because ChatGPT does that very well in real time right away. So I can use that while I'm writing. The problem is that, yeah, it's a good grammatical, you know, f you know change it to U.S. English, change it to British English, whatever, this kind of stuff and change the, uh, um, make sure that it's written in, in, a, in a way that's uh, legible or whatever. It, it fills in your gaps, but it can't add context. It doesn't know what you're talking yeah. about. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't know that like, it's very, you have to learn how to prompt AI correctly in order for it to do its job back to you. In your world, is there, are you like, is there a place where you can go to buy like an AI that you can train? Like, can I buy my own AI? I'm just curious personally. Like, is there like not ChatGPT, which is locked up or whatever, you can buy version 4.5, but can I like get it my own um, AI and then configure it to do things like that? Is that what you're doing? Is there like a raw AI that you can purchase and then you guys, your developers work with it and train it to do what you want to do? Or are you using other people's AI? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, there there are machine learning, like open source AI and machine learning models that are available that, you know, many companies are using to build AI solutions. So the short answer is like most AI companies aren't building everything from scratch. We're not either. Right. They're taking model fundamental models that are available and then they're tailoring those to particular applications or adding custom functionality to it 
and, and we're not any different than that. We're leveraging like the general trend and the advancement of these models mm. to build something specific for, you know, the electrical um, sales and distribution market. Um, so absolutely, I guess you, you can find fundamental models available that you could train to a particular problem. Um, but I don't think it's, it's not to the point where laymen are really able to like, you know, um, build these, you, you need someone that has a, a background in AI and ML to be able to configure the models uh, correctly, I would say generally, and make sure that they're performing well. Mm. The uh, API that I brought up earlier, why have you guys not, have you guys considered allowing other people to uh, drill into your system and extract data or is that off the table? Um, we're not planning to sell like the raw structured database of say like product information and attributes. Um, uh, so in terms of API access, I think it would depend on the use case. I do think that there's potentially a play where like this market data might be interested to various stakeholders, right. To understand like what's being searched for in the market, for example, or where are there gaps between what's being searched for and where are their product offerings? Um, so those are things that like, I guess we're considering, um, but haven't yet like released any capability there. So um, like only humans can ask your system questions. Another computer system can't ask your computer system questions. Correct. Yeah. You have to be, you have to be subscribed to the Parspec service and you have to make those, those queries like as part of the app. Can people um, page, page scrape Parspec? So you guys are out page scraping, right? You send out your web crawlers and it says, okay, look at this, read that, grab that document, make a copy of it, put it here, right? Yeah. Can people go to Parscape back and log in and say, yeah, page scrape everything there and give it to me in this order and put this over here. And can they just like do like 7,000 queries a day on your system or you kick them out? No, I mean, we don't surface the entire database, right? It's based on like they upload a bill of materials and we uh, provide documents or they execute a search on a one-off basis. So I guess that information isn't exposed for someone to go uh, scrape it. Uh, so and, you guys yeah. are rude, eh? You like to scrape everybody else's data, but nobody well, can scrape yours. <laughs> I'm just well, I'm no, joking. It's I a mean, joke. Yeah. 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 I, and it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds because every manufacturer hosts this data in different locations. And these locations mm. are publicly they're public publicly available right it's as if you were to go to their website go to a particular product and you see that download spec sheet button that's essentially what we're doing mm. but not every manufacturer is the same or has the same layout and so i don't want um like i want to make sure that we we tell our audience that this is the uh result of a, a lot of hard work and effort from actually a fairly large team of developers product managers designers front end back end programmers there's a lot of people that are working on this challenge at Parspec and, you know, they've done a, a tremendous job helping our, our target market out. Uh, and it's not something that's easily replicable. Uh, we would encourage others to try it out, but you'll find that it's going to be time consuming. It's going to be costly. And it's a reason why, you know, reps, distributors don't do it themselves because it's a, a huge risk. So, you know, as a technology company, a software technology company, we're leveraging AI, we're leveraging data, we're leveraging the usage of our existing customers to help refine the program and make it better for them. Well, these guys are dangerous, Greg Eric, but you know who's even more <laughs> dangerous? The gangsters down at SATCO. Go to SATCO.com, Greg Eric. I told you my story at the beginning. I highly encourage you guys to use them. They, they can sort through a lot of that stuff, like much like Parspec does, and figure out what you need for a job because they have multiple options, a lot of stock, great pricing, great people. And if you got light bulbs in a warehouse and you sell them to people, you might want to consider joining the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. And special thanks go out to Forrest Flagger and Zach Mix of Parspec. Uh, that's parspec.io. And you can check them out on LinkedIn. They're on there. They're everywhere. And uh, they're dangerous. Thank you for listening. <laughs>